All right, on today's A Sharp Photo, I am going to talk about the day my camera died and my photo session with Royal. Okay, so if you don't know already, I had a photo session maybe, I think it would have been three to four weeks ago. And the, the aim was to shoot at sunrise. So, you know, got there early. Whenever you're shooting at sunrise, you don't arrive at sunri sunrise. You normally want to be there like 30 minutes before. So you can set up and sunrise is a, is a progressive thing. Like it's not like there's no sun and then there's sun, but you can actually, it rises. You can see it slowly come, you know, out of the water and come out. Yeah, yeah no. come out of the water and just go up into the sky. And as it does that, clouds and light. So you got a whole bunch of different colors and textures. So what I love about shooting at sunrise <clears throat> and even sunset is that there's so many different looks to the sky and even the lighting on your subject. You're shooting a subject. So it's, it's really cool. It's very dynamic. So you want to be there through the whole thing. So set it up. I had a model who was just great. She's just professional. Um, she was she wasn't on time. She was early. You know, she was ready to go. She was excited. So I'm like, this is great. You know, so get there. I was there probably a little earlier than I needed to be. So hung out, walked around, checked some things out, and then when it was time to get ready, set things up. I knew that um, because of where I was trying to shoot, I was trying to shoot. I wanted to place the model on some rocks, right? Um, and I wanted to, uh, I couldn't set my lights up because of where I had the, the model. So I was like, all right, so I will put her on the rocks and then I'll come around so that she's facing the sun. So I'll be in the water in front of her. So the sun is lighting her and, you know, I'm getting, you know, great lighting, it, whatever. Right. That, that's what I'm thinking. So I'm setting up and I'm like, eh. Water's moving a little fast, and maybe it's a little deeper than I thought, but but it should be fine. So, got the model up there on the rocks safely. You know, as important as it is to get great imagery, it's also very important to make sure that your model is safe. You know, so got her there, got her positioned, and I'm walking around, and again, the water is, you know, to say it's deep is not correct. It's going in and out. So... As I'm walking out, you know, at one point, the water might be a little bit above my ankles. But then as the tide comes in, it's like just about at my knees, you know, and it's it's moving. I'm like, oh, OK, all right. Just just be careful. So because I wanted to be higher than I was, I saw a rock. I was like, oh, OK. Now, it didn't even click to me. You didn't see this rock. Now you see it. That means that the water is coming over it and going away. So go to climb up on the rock. And as I'm climbing up on the rock, I didn't even think about, hey, water just went past you, it went out, should be coming back. I'm just, I'm focused, I'm, I'm on my, I'm doing my thing, I'm getting ready to get the shoot, get the shot, everything's great. As I'm getting up on there, wave comes, knocks me over, right? It, my whole camera, went in the water you know i had a backpack on and i had some additional gear there i bumped my chin on that rock that's why i normally have a a, a full beard had cut it off because i was bleeding if you if you go to my instagram page and you see my reel um from this day i didn't notice it at the time there was blood in my beard you know the model had to tell me like i think you get that taken care of so i had to shave all of this off in order to put a band-aid on it and uh, yeah, I, I just, I think I felt more embarrassed, you know, a little silly, right? You know, and then I, I might've felt like I was wasting uh, the model, Royal, like I was wasting the time, you know? And I don't think I, I gauged, you know, maybe how, how banged up I was. And let me pause right here and make sure that you know this. So water, obviously bad for electronics. Salt water, is almost 100% of the time fatal. But if you ever get electronics wet, what you wanna do is nothing. 
you want it to dry. You know, normally put it in rice or something. You want it to fully dry. As a matter of fact, if you are a professional photographer, then what you really want to do is take your camera to a shop and let somebody deal with it. I mean, get it as dry as possible, but get it to a shop as soon as possible. All right. So the one thing you don't want to do is power it on because if it's wet, if there's salt in it, anything like that, you don't want it to react with the power that you run through the camera. So you don't turn it on to see if it still works. You immediately stop and you let a professional handle that. Of course, I know all this afterward. <laughs> so in my mind, it's like, oh no, you know, I got this woman out here, you know, early in the morning. I don't want to waste her time. Does my camera still work? You know, I didn't realize how wet it was, you know. And of course, I turned it on. I was explaining to someone, I don't know if you've seen the DC film Shazam, right? But there's there's these symbols that pop up. That's kind of like one of the motifs in the film. That's what it looked like <laughs> on my display when I tried to turn my camera on twice. I mean, you're not supposed to turn it on at all, right? So would not turn back on. I'm like, I'm so sorry. You know, we got to go. She's like, no, you got to go. Your face is bleeding, you know? So I get home, you know, put it in rice, did all of that, and camera won't turn back on. So that's that. I lost my camera, uh, uh, my big flash. You know, I do have some smaller speed lights, but I had a, a bigger flash that I use that does better in terms of overpowering the sun. You know, so it's like, ah, oh, man, you know? So I, I'm, I'm gonna do something fun with those those items that were destroyed in the water but yeah so that was that was the day my camera died but one thing i did and you know you know what you i, I would encourage you you know you, you should always be prepared to do something because nine times out of ten things will not go wrong that one time they will you have to do something so i was like what can i do because I don't I don't want to totally waste her time. So I was like, well, you got your phone. Um, most people, or I should say many photographers are can, can be purists in that way. Whereas if it's not a real camera, it's not a real picture. It doesn't matter. But a camera is a camera. And if you're a skills craftsman, you should be able to know what to do with it. So I was like, listen, I, I will get some video and I will get whatever pictures I can, and, and there we are. So so let, let's start looking at some stuff. Okay, so this was a picture I took with my phone. So I'm like, I, I have to do something. You know, she was here. I don't want her time to be totally wasted. So you can see, here we are. You have the sun is coming up in the, in the back. And like I said about those colors, you see the, the orange and it's fading into the darker blue sky. Um, you see the sun is to the right of us, right? You know, uh, camera right. There's the sun is. I like the way it's lighting her body there. See, this is a type of situation where it would have been nice to have a light on the left there to fill in that sun. But it's okay. It's okay. You know, and, and again, this is not the level of work that it was my intention to create. But this was me trying to salvage something that happened, you know? So, and to be honest, if you're a photographer, um, you should be capturing um, behind the scenes anyway. So if you don't have a pro um, camera or a, another videographer on deck to grab this stuff, at the very least, you should, you know, put your phone up on a monopod or a tripod or something to capture you working so that you can kind of put, you know, little uh, montages together of you doing what you're doing. It's one thing to say, oh, here are my pictures. And then another thing to show you um, working and in progress. So, I mean, I still like, you know, the way the, like, you know, the, the like seeing the texture in the rocks and I, I like the color of it, but I will say that my cell phone camera doesn't render high resolution images when you pixel peep. You know, when you zoom all the way in, it's a little jack. You know, what's interesting is it does fine with video. So, you know, I, I do a lot of stock imagery and I can submit stock video from my phone, but I've never been able to submit um, stock imagery. Don't know why, you know, I guess, and, and maybe it may be the zooming in. Maybe if I don't zoom in, 
the resolution is better. So I have to experiment with that because I got this camera so I could use it on the fly. And when I don't have, you know, my big boy camera, I wanted to be able to to have something to grab stuff and use, you know, and I, personally, I can use these images, but I do want to be able to use them for stock. So got to do a little bit more experimentation and work with that. We'll see. All right, let's look at the next image. OK, so what I actually did was about two weeks later, because I have a backup camera, my backup of cameras very old. Um, I was shooting with a 7D Mark II, my backup camera, which I'd used on shoots for a long time until I bought my 7D Mark II, is a 10D, which is like, man, how old is a 10D? A 10D might be, it, it might be like 2005 or 2006 when they came out with that. So much older, doesn't have, you know, the megapixels that we're accustomed to, but it gets the job done. So I'm like, listen, this is what we're going to do. We're going to take that backup camera. We're going to work with the same model. We're going to work in the same location. And I was intentional about that because I felt like I needed to allegorically get back on my bike. You know, I needed to kind of conquer that place, you know, because I didn't want I didn't want that to get in my head. You know, I didn't want any superstitions or anything like that. So I'm like, let's just go back to where we were and do the same shoot that we intended to do. You know, so what we were doing was we were doing the sunrise shoot. Um, she was nude, YouTube, I'm gonna show that, but she was nude, so that, that's why she's wearing this. You know what I mean? So like when we were, when we would do the nude stuff, she would take that off and put that to the side and then we shot, you know, and then she put it back on. So. We did this and then we also did some carnival stuff because she was in carnival. So that was fun. You know, the fact that we could uh, do that stuff. We, we were trying to do the carnival shoot before carnival, but it just wasn't time. But I was like, wait, you own it? If you own a shoot, we can do whatever we want, you know? So, all right. You know what? Now, it's hard, it's hard to compare. Oh, wait, no, I think I have another one to compare. So, so we have this. This is processed a lot because I really wanted the, the sky to pop. And, and again, because I couldn't get a light on her or a light on her the way that I wanted, I should say. I did, I used my speed lights from pretty far away and I didn't have a, a modifier on them. It was just bare bulb. But the, the goal was to really just kind of get some light on her. I think you can kind of see if you look at the, the shadow um, down by her right angle, ankle, that this was, you know, pretty hard light. But I really think it, it kind of works. I, I mean, I, I like a softer light look, but it does pull her away from the background. And then, you know, of course, I did a little bit of work to push that background back. I told her what I was going for here was not so much trying to take a picture, but I wanted to create a painting, you know, or uh, um, just something something to capture attention, not just a picture of a pretty girl, you know, but something that's holistically, you know, engaging. So, so that's kind of what I was going for. So I don't mind the heavy processing as much because I'm not just going for photography. You know, I, I want, I want it to feel like she could have been a mermaid, you know, or something like that. So that's, that's kind of what I was going for. This is unprocessed straight out of camera. You know, so different image, um, but I, like I say, I don't mind this, but I, 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 I like her being pulled away from the background just a little bit more. But, you know, you, you, you can still see where it was. It actually is, it's not bad, you know, in terms of the lighting and and such. So, you know, I mean, I, I, I like things maybe a little bit more extreme depending on what I'm shooting, but but I do like this. I'm going to tell you what I like most about this picture here. Royal has a nice, big, real smile on her face. And, you know, as a model, don't forget to smile. There, there's normally a lot of work to to be sexy and fierce. And you, you're always looking at a camera a particular way. Listen, nothing wrong with a smile. A smile can be just as sexy as whatever sexy look, you know, people want to come up with, you know, 
Royal, um, and I, I'm excited about her and what she's doing as a model. She modeled a while back, she stopped, and now she's getting into it. And she has really good instincts. You know, I don't have to direct her a ton, you know, and I think that's important as a model. Like, understand that it's your job to know how to pose and how to move, you know, and, and, and almost have that telepathy with the photographer because if you take on that responsibility, then the photographer can solely focus on capturing you and not on posing. Now, still, even if you're an amazing model, you know, the photographer may see something different and have you move your hand, this, that, or the other. But if the photographer has to do all of the posing and all of the thinking for you, that, that leaves less bandwidth for the photographer to think about what they need to do as an artist. So this is fun, right? This is her carnival outfit, which is funny because if you, you look at her arms, you see all those, um, those strings, all of those had to be tied. And on her legs, that's not an actual boot. That's a covering. So that had to be tied all the way down too, as well. So it's just always funny. You know, those, those behind the scenes things that people don't know or don't think of. Even um, these feathers, I think you can see it. It's like a harness, but it's a, uh, it's like pipe cleaner and it's real hard. So it mounts onto her shoulders. You know what I mean? And then you have to tie it in. And I'm like, woo! It was um, a slightly windy day and she was getting blown <laughs> back. And she had to kind of stop and be careful because she got heels on, you know? But um, I just love these colors. I love it against this background. You know what I mean? Because it, they jump off more. That yellow against that green is like, wow. You know, this, you, you see the, the the sidewalk, the ground there? That is a driveway into a, that was some type of club or resort type situation. And uh, no trespass, you know? So walked in, you know, I, so one, two, three, put her like three of these uh, um, uh, blocks back, right? You know, on the sidewalk and we there I'm setting up and then the security guard comes out. He's like, you know, you look very beautiful, but you can't be beautiful right here. And I was like, well, you know where you can be beautiful, right on the public sidewalk, you know? So, you know, respect people in their space, you know, but get what you got to get and make sure you're always looking. I've actually shot at this location before. The, the whole location. And I didn't see this last time. So I was like, oh my gosh, that is lovely. I, I just love the way that, how it gives you those um, those leading lines. You know what I mean? That's, that's just amazing. So again, I process, I normally, or I would say as of late, in the, in the past year, I've been kind of desaturating um, a lot of my imagery. I just, I like the way that looks and the way that feels, but of course, it's carnival, so you need to see the color. So there is some desaturation there, but then I kind of put some stuff back. So so it still has the punch, but, you know, it's, it's more of my style, you know? So, yeah, I, I like everything here. I love the posing. You know, I love even her being turned to the side a little bit, you know, lets you see things a different way. Like even because the wind's blowing, her uh, the, the tail on the feathers get to blow away from her since she's turned to the side. So yeah, that's that's a lot of fun. This um unprocessed, but I I just I just I love this pose. I even I even like the idea. Eh, it's a little tilted. I'll fix that later. Yeah, because it's straight out of camera. But um I like the idea of you know all of the color on one side of the frame and then just background on the other. You know, I like that looking up with the eyes closed, just, just all of that. You know, um, I'm a big fan of um, eyes closed. Anyway, a lot of times you, it, it looks peaceful, you know, and then there's not this pressure to pour something into the, the, the camera. You know, a lot of times when you close your eyes, you can literally just take a, you know, just exhale and relax and it looks relaxed so so this is fun I, I like this one i like this one a lot you know I, it feels like you can really see the whole look there with this 
you know, like I, I'm really looking at it. I, I love this. This is great. All right. So th this, this is a, this is such a, almost like Miami, you know, or some type of coastal tropical city type feel, you know what I'm saying? With those palm trees and, and just the building and it's, I, I love it. I love it. And, and I knew, you know, when we shot here in the morning, there wasn't going to be a ton of traffic down this road in particular. We did have to stop a couple times, but, but I like that. And, and she's to the side and I wanted that. I, I wonder if I, I could have moved her to the middle of the road just so they could have a different look, but I still like this anyway. Of course, you know, after, after some processing, we're going to pull down the background some, make sure those colors pop a little bit more. But I like just I always like like crossing feet like this, you know, and then you see what it does. Right. I mean, it's cool at the bottom, but what it does is it, it's pushing those hips out in a way that when you stand flat, it doesn't do that. You know what I mean? Because that leg crossing over makes that hip, you know, makes that that curve there from her waist, you know, all the way down her thigh. It makes that pop out even more you know and i even like um the hand out there you know it just makes that whole thing just work you know so that's that's just really nice really nice one thing i missed and again i i, I think everybody's secret weapon is having a stylist or um like a makeup artist or at least just a second set of eyes you know um her the top to her suit kind of kept slipping you know, and I'm not skittish, you know, or, you know, the human body is human body is a work of art. Right. But we're not going for, you know, showing areola. So that's there. And that, that wasn't our intention. So, you know, got to work that out. But that doesn't bother me. But that's not the look we're going for. So it just has to be adjusted. But other than that, this image is almost perfect. I would probably crop I, I like the trees and the idea of the trees but i think i will crop down a little bit more to get rid of some of this white space that we're seeing here all right so there was this really nice spiraling staircase there this is kind of like a downtown area you know so i definitely had to get that and i you know i like the fact that there's really no color in this area so she's bringing all of the color there with her so um that's fun. Just great posing, a uh, great color. You know, there may be some clutter in terms of the lines and all that, but her color kind of obliterate, obliterates all of that. Okay, easy peasy. So uh, this is a uh, this is what we're looking at for today. Um, I will say just for a few other things, I did grab and, and I spent less time shooting in this location the, on on the stairs because I actually. Um, shot video. So I wanted to get her um, walking in her uh, in her costume and, you know, get like some detail. So video is different for me. I'm still um, learning to really grasp it. But, you know, because when you when you do photography, you're kind of get one moment, you know, and you, you massage and you move and you adjust until you got your one moment. And then what you, once you got your one moment, you're done, you know. But with video, you're creating a protracted, a long moment. And in order to do that, you normally need a collection of other shorter moments. So you need a second here, two seconds there, a little bit less than a second here, you know? So in order to do that, you, you end up grabbing all these 10 second and five second slices, you know? So you have to actually have the whole picture in your head and then you have to you know shoot all these small things so that you know you can pull your one and your two and your half a second pieces from those you know so um if you want to see an example of that i might put a short up here on youtube but if you go to my instagram page and that's at a sharp photo um i do have a reel you know where i put that video together and it's fun. It worked. It went well. You can, th there's a couple ways to do that. You know, you're putting a reel together, you could manually add all your pieces and then edit and do the transitions and all that type of stuff. Or 
you can use some type of program. There's tons of them. And a lot of these have uh, re, um, templates. You know, even Instagram has templates. And you pull down the template and then you put in your images, you put in your videos, what have you, and it follows along just like whatever you saw in the, in the prior template. Template, And you can, you can even edit the video in template, right? So if your video is this long and then the template is this space, you can move your video to whatever space you want it to, to pick up in that template. So yeah, so that was oh, that was my experience, but I, I was glad that I was able to one revisit this with the young lady and give her something of quality, you know, and two, for me, I was able to kind of defeat a difficult situation, you know, kind of a heartbreaking situation for me because I mean, listen, I've had that camera probably since 2018. 2019 something like that you know and when you when you're a photographer you know your camera it's 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 an instrument right so there's there's you get to the point where you're not looking at things you know you know where all the buttons are so you can move quickly in a moment you know so it's it, it's an extension of me you know so to not have it was very uncomfortable you know and and just to be unable to do the things that I normally do. Like my, my older camera does not do uh, film, you know, it doesn't do video, you know? So it's like, ah, you know, but, you know, again, I was able to grab video with my phone and put that together, together that way, you know? So, oh, as a photographer, right? And it doesn't matter how much money you're making, if you're making a ton of money, if you're not making all the money you want, um, it's a good idea to have your equipment insured. If your equipment is insured and something happens to it, then as long as certain conditions are fulfilled, you should be able to get it replaced, you know, and insurance, everybody hates insurance, right? Because you pay, you pay, you pay, you pay, and you never need it, you know, so it feels like you've wasted your money until you need it, you know, and that's one of those situations where it's better to have it and not need it than to need it and not have it, you know, which was a situation that I was in. I actually had, I didn't have insurance for my equipment, but I had insurance um, for, for a job, you know, probably maybe a couple months before this happened. So I was like, oh man, you know, but um, just, just a couple of things with insurance, right? You know, for your equipment. Normally, if you have a uh, renter's insurance, um, that's something where you could, you, you may be able to insure your equipment with that, you know, even, even homeowners insurance. And depending on how you, how you bought, you know, what card you use to buy your equipment, you know, there are situations like that where there's some type of coverage, you know, with that. So just do your homework, you know, uh, see what you got. I mean, listen, that, I mean, at the very least, you know, you get it from Amazon, buy the, get the, get the, the, uh, um, the protection plan, you know, get the longest one they got something, but you, you don't want to be in a position, position where if this is the primary thing that you do to make a living, you have to insure it so that you can continue to do it, you know, later on as things come up. So if you don't, uh, follow me on our, all social media platforms, I am at a sharp photo and please um, like this video and subscribe to it. And then also follow Royal. I know on Instagram, she is a Royal Stupids. Uh, that is her name. You find her. So she is up and coming and I'm excited to see more of what she'll do with me and with, with tons of other photographers. I, you know what? I'm trying to wrap this up. If you're a model and you're watching this, I do want to encourage you to shoot with as many photographers as possible. Um, I definitely told her that. I, I'm like, I know you're comfortable with me. We're cool. But as you're working, you're going to encounter lots of photographers. So you want to know how to connect with and work with all of them. You know, not just somebody you like. You know, maybe you need to know how to work with somebody you don't like. You know what I mean? Maybe you need to learn how to work with somebody who maybe isn't as great or works very differently than 
than other people that you've worked with. If you if you have that flexibility, that's just going to make you um, more of a draw, you know, and everybody want to work with you, work with you because you can work with everybody. And they they may be awful to work with, but you're so good to work with that you make it happen, you know. So thank you for watching. Definitely going to continue to do this because I like it. It's a great way for me to honestly even review my own work. Um, please feel free to leave comments and thoughts below and, and I'll definitely respond. Y'all take care. Eyes up. Stay sharp.